Yo, what's up people? I'm Zara Kane. Welcome back to my channel. The date is five days before Christmas 2021. So it's my duty to remind you that at this point, the new court codex is just around the corner, scheduled for early 2022. And therefore, all of the things I talk about in this video are completely subject to change. Literally anything could happen. But in the meantime, I'm still having fun with the old stuff. Now, the Shadow Throne box set has arrived for me this weekend, so, you know, we do already have some new rules in hand for the Brood Coven and the Neophyte Hybrids, for example, so, you know, we've got an idea of what's going to come. But anyway, today I'm going to be talking about Aberrants, probably one of the most iconic Gene Steeler Course units, which have sadly had a firm fixture on the shelf for most of 8th and all of 9th edition, you know, these bad boys are absolutely hench and so much fun to play, but they took a nasty points increase at some point, I think, towards the end of eight, and it just made them impossible to justify in a competitive list. Because it's not just the aberrants you've got to pay for, it's the idea that to get the most out of them, you've got to bring a whole host of, you know, supporting elements to apply buffs and all that shit. So my disclaimer for today is don't take this advice and think that they're competitive or that even any of this is a good idea. It ain't. It's an all your eggs in one basket idea and that basket in particular is a very dated 8th edition basket times have changed since then you know newer armies can do similar crazy damage probably for less investment but you know what they don't look as cool whilst they're doing it so here we are I mean, I certainly hope that this won't be the case after the new Codex comes out because we all want to see Aberrants being viable again. They're rumoured to be going up to Toughness 5, which makes perfect sense to me. Or maybe 3 Wounds, maybe they'll get more attacks, or just even points decreases because anything that's going to make them worthwhile in a reliable way. What I can assure you is, right now, at the time going to press, a full Aberrant Assault list can still be very nasty if you pull it off. You know, I often take it to games simply because if it works, it can be devastating, and that puts a huge smile on my face. I don't care if I win or lose the battle because I've had fun and that's what matters. So, anyway, let's jump in. Here is the recipe. So, first of all, you're going to need a Psyker, like a Magus, or a Patriarch if you want. You're going to need a Primus an Abominant, a big squad of Aberrants, and a Biophagus, however you say them. You'd also probably want a Goliath Truck to keep them in, keep them safe turn one. You don't really want to be sinking CP into a perfect ambush to bring them out of Deep Strike. That's just total waste. I'd also probably consider like a smaller five-man squad of Aberrants as like a second wave as your little backup squad. Or you know what, fuck it, bring another ten-man squad. When in Rome, go crazy. You know what, in fact, bring 30, be that person. If you want the gang to stick around after the first fight, I'd also throw in an Icon Ward because he gives some great durability buffs. So let's go over why we pick all this stuff individually. First up, the Primus. Now before we go on, note that we already know his new rules because they came in the Shadow Throne box. In the old Codex, he gave a plus one to hit in the fight phase. You know, you make your Aberrants hit more reliably, especially with the Hammers, which they suffer a minus one to hit. And that also applies for the Abominant Sledgehammer too. So people often choose Pauper Princes now for the full rerolls creed, but this whole list that we're doing here relies on being bladed cog, so it is a necessity. What we do know is that in the new rules, he's now giving a reroll ones to hit aura instead, so I'd still say that's essential. Perhaps we'll get plus one to hit from another buffing character aura or a psychic power or wall or trait, something like that. Now, his other ability has changed somewhat too, for the better. It's called Meticulous Planner. And in the old rules, you would whack down a reroll once to wound aura against one chosen target. So the downside would be that once that target is destroyed, the buff is basically gone and, you know, void. So thankfully, in the new rules, it's been flipped on its head. Now he gives the buff out in your command phase, but you put it on one of your own units. So a simple reroll once to wound against anything that they attack. So that's great. You can just plonk that on the aberrants. You know, anything that they connect with or that connects with them in a counteroffensive will get, you know, real ones to win against. And then you can also switch that up in your next turns when your next command phase comes around. You know, let's say your priorities change. You can then put that on some other unit and then, you know, it all changes. That's fine. This part is especially useful considering the amount of transhuman physiology style defensive profiles that are cropping up now. So for you newbies, that's a Space Marine stratagem that dictates all wound rolls of 1, 2 or 3 fail, no matter how much strength you have or any special rules your weapons might have. You know, Aberrants are crazy strong, so we'd love to be wounding lots of elite infantries on 2 normally, but when your opponent's got something like this, it just neuters you. It means that half of your wounds are going to fail, basically. 
Nowadays, almost every other faction's got access to this type of thing, but we still call it transhuman as a nickname. You know, everyone recognizes that. Regardless, being able to reroll some of those wounds of one is just a lifesaver. Anyway, next, you need a Magus or a Patriot for casting Might from Beyond. This gives you the extra attacks and extra strength. You know, don't really worry about the strength, but the attacks are essential. Then you want a Barfagus for injecting the Aberrants with his Goad Staff thing. You can take an Alchemist Familiar. That gives you the chance to roll an additional D3 when you're getting the buffs, so you can choose the one that you want. Now, the plus one strength buff, again, is the least useful one. It will stack with Might from Beyond, but you just don't need it. You want attacks or toughness. Remember, you can also buff the Abominant with this guy. So if your big attack is going to take place in turn two, that gives you time to sell both him and the main squad of Aberrants with the requisite buffs that they need. Next, the Icon Ward. He gives all of your Aberrants and Abominants a reroll ones bonus to their feel no pain. So if you want to make them stick around after their first fight, this is really nice. He needs to be up at the front of the action by the side where it's all going down. Take it or leave it. He's not exactly essential for this. They can make do without. Now we get to the interesting bit, the Abominant. He is essential for this play. I'm going to bring up his stats on the screen so you can get an idea of how to run him. We're going to kit him out with the Mark of the Clawed Omnissiah Relic for a 3 plus Invorn save. That's basically stack in the 4 plus for the Relic and a plus 1 from Bladed Cog. And optionally, if you want him as your Warlord, instead of bringing along a Patriarch, you could choose something like Shadow Stalker for a minus 1 to hit, you know, layering on those buffs, make him harder to kill. The most important part, however, is his exploding hits aura called the Chosen One. Every hit roll of six becomes two hits, and they're automatic hits, both for the aberrants around him and for himself. So it's often forgot about, but it's so good. People often ask me about my custom abominant. I nicknamed him Barry Mutante. He's the undeniable star of my early 9th edition Crusade Force. I cannot remember for the love of me where I got the model. It was some Russian site, but I absolutely love it. I was always really underwhelmed by the official Abominant model. It's just tiny. My advice, make your own or kit bash it from something like a Goliath Zerka from Necromunda or something. He should be so much more menacing because part of his role in this list is psychological. He should look like an absolute beast on the table and the more you play him up to that, your opponent will focus on him and that's exactly what you want. Let them waste all their shooting into a tough model that can tank a load of damage rather than at your aberrants or other stuff where the real danger is. So more on that later. Lastly, the aberrants themselves. If you're going to do all this stuff, then go all in and max 10 out in each squad. You want two hypermorphs with improvised weapons, maybe six with hammers, and then two with picks. I like to think the picks are good at dealing with chaff. And also, if you have to lose a few models in combat, you can throw those cheaper guys away first. So, there's all the ingredients. Now let's gan down to business. Let's assume you've lined everything up for, you know, this big fight to go down in turn two. Say turn one, you know, you move your stuff up a bit, keep behind cover, you know, you apply some buffs to the Abominant or the first squad of Aberrants, and then, you know, it all kicks off in this turn. First thing you're going to do in the movement phase is spend 2 CP for Monstrous Vigor. So this bumps up the Aberrants Feel No Pain to a 4+. Plus. And remember, they'll be rerolling ones near the Icon War. So you got to do this in advance before you psychic, before you shoot, and before you charge, before you attack and everything. You have to do it in the movement phase. You know, I always felt like this was a badly done strategy because I feel like it should be something that you trigger when someone targets you, you know, like a reactive strategy rather than you always have to do it in the movement phase before anything else, uh, you know, assuming that something's going to happen. But to be fair, something always does happen, so just do it. Next, you've got to run up to them with the Biophagus. You've got to inject them with his goad. Remember that first you have to roll a dice to see if you slay one of your own stupidly expensive mutants on a one. And this part is hilarious. A few weeks back, I was playing against Custodes, surprise, surprise, at Boards and Swords in Derby. And I attempted to buff my Abominant in the second turn. He was tied up fighting a Telemon Dreadnought. And just my luck, I rolled a one and I killed my own Abobin in the process. I just fucking headbutted the wall next to me, screamed, why? And then carried on, much to my opponent's amusement. But anyway, you want either attacks or toughness as your buffs here. Going up to toughness five helps protect the aberrants from whatever counteroffensive comes back, you know, bolt guns and shit like that especially. And I certainly hope that that buff becomes something you can get up to toughness six in the new codex. But let's say for today's example, you know, we'll go for attacks just so I can show you how silly it can get. Next, in the psychic phase, you want to cast Might from Beyond on them. And obviously other stuff like Mass Hypnosis on the enemy, you know, whatever you're attacking or a second target. 
just try to avoid advancing the aberrants and hoping for a charge after casting Psychic Stimulus. It's very easy to fail that cast and be stuck in limbo with no charge. You do not want that to happen. So let's assume we've moved our boys up, those buffs are in place and you've made all the charges against a beefy target. Remember to move your Primus up into a buffing range position. He's got to be within six inch of the aberrants after they've made their charge. So think about this in the movement phase. What I often do is advance up some neophytes by his side since you'll want to screen him and provide meat shields for the abominant. You'll see why later. So when the actual fighting starts, you'll want to pay 1 CP for Overthrow the Oppressors. This is the Bladed Cog stratagem for additional attacks. By default, it's on a 5 or 6 to hit against any Imperium army. Against Admech, it's crazy at 4, 5s and 6s. And against any other Xenos or Chaos army like Orcs or whatever, it's only 6s. Now, it's important to understand this next bit, how it works, because the wording is important. This will combine with your Abominance Chosen 1 ability, but you have to roll things in the right order. So Overthrow the Oppressors gives you the chance to roll for more hits when it triggers. They don't automatically hit. But the Chosen 1 gives you automatic double hits on a 6 only, and that's unmodified. So here's the way you roll it. Let's say we're hitting you know, an Imperium army, fucking Custodes, why not? First, you roll your initial attacks. There we go. And then if you're on the new rolls with the Primus nearby, you'll be re-rolling any of those once. Then you count up all the fives and sixes and roll that many extra attacks for Overthrow of the Oppressors. Again, you re-roll any ones after that point. Then, once you've done all of that, you count up your final tally of sixes, double that number for the Chosen One ability. These are automatic hits from them. You don't have to roll for them. You just throw them in the pot. You cannot generate any further attacks after this point, but as you can see, this can get ridiculous really fucking quickly. Now, let's look into some of the little nuances and stuff with all the different weapons. So, first of all, remember that Hypermorphs make double attacks with their improvised weapon. They usually get three base, so that would usually be times two, which is six. But we're putting on the Biofocus's extra attack and from Might From Beyond. So they're getting five attacks times by two. That becomes ten before you even do the exploding hits or the chosen one, you know, double hits, whatever. Again, you know, that number could change after the new codex, but it's what I'm working with right now. But think of it like this. If you have two of these guys in a squad, that's 20 attacks before you even think about the hammers. The only downside is being damage two, which is so commonly reduced to damage one these days by, you know, let's say dreadnoughts, crap like that. And that's why it's important to bring hammers, which are flat damage three. So let's go to Tabletop Simulator. We're going to look at two Hypermorphs with 10 attacks each because they've doubled it. And let's roll those. We're going to re-roll all the ones because we're going to assume there's a Primus nearby with his new ability. We're going to get rid of those hits that don't make it. And we're going to put aside all the extra hits for Overthrow of the Oppressors. So that's fives and sixes. We roll again to hit. Reroll any ones. And then any ones and twos missed. So get rid of those. Here's our hits in total. We're going to then Duplicate all the sixes, and that gives us all the extra for the chosen one from the abominant. And you can see there we have got 26 attacks total, all flat damage two, AP minus one. Let's try it now with the power hammers. So we've got six guys with hammers, four attacks each. These are hitting on fours because they're a minus one to hit. So we'll reroll the ones from the Primus, get rid of those. Let's put aside, that's quite a lot of sixes there actually. Let's put aside our original roll. We roll these uh, overthrow the oppressors and re roll the ones again from the Primus. Those ones, twos, and threes miss. Bring back in the original roll and we duplicate all those sixes by two for chosen one. And we have got 31 power hammer hits. All flat damage three. That's mental. Okay, now let's go back and look at the power pit quickly because there's something I actually overlooked here. I always thought that the Power Pick Aberrants just got one additional Rending Claw attack, like an Acolyte gets one extra attack with their Cultist Knife sort of thing. Reading back now, I realise that's not actually true. It says each time you make an attack with the Pick, you make an additional one with the Rending Claw. So that means if I have up to four base attacks with a Pick, I also have four base attacks with a Rending Claw to go along with it. And then they get all the same additional exploding and bonus hits from, you know, all the buffs and shit, which is just crazy. So with this in mind, I'm almost convinced that running bare bones power pick aberrants is worthwhile for certain cases. Maybe if you bring them in a separate squad or something, who knows? Okay, so that's all of the offensive shit they can offer. So let's look at how well they hold up when your opponent claps back. 
So you're going to be toughness 4 base, which is frankly shit. Let's certainly hope they do get that toughness 5 buff. Or, you know, maybe you've given the injection from the Biophagus, so there could be 5 anyway. So that means that basic bolt guns sort of stuff can still wound you fairly easily. A 5 plus save is pretty wank too. But at least with Blade of Cog, you'll have that 6 plus invuln in case they hit you with the heavy AP stuff. Might save a few wounds. But the important part is our own damage reduction ability, Bestial Vigor. So we reduce damage by one. So a heavy bolt around, for example, it can't kill you in one shot since, you know, Aberrants have got two wounds each. So then you've got the Feel No Pain. By default, it's five or six. But remember, we're spending two CP in the movement phase to bump that up to four. And we'll be re-rolling ones near the Icon Ward. Now, overall, this can really help keep them alive. But I would not leave them out in the open, assuming that they'll tank it. It's not enough for that. So here's where the Abominant comes back in. His Sledgehammer is really beefy. It does a minimum of three damage per strike up to D6. But he really just doesn't have enough attacks or the weapon skill to reliably do damage. However, that's not the point. He's here to be a bullet sponge because nine out of ten times, your opponent won't really know that the Abominant is actually crap in combat. So they'll see him and they'll piss their pants, focus stuff on him, and that's what we want. When he's got the Mark of the Clawed Omnissire, he will outright deflect two in every three shots with that invul. Then after that, he's still got all the same damage reduction as the Aberrants and the Feel No Pain. But, you know, before you have to do those, the best part is unquestioning loyalty. This is your trump card. Like I've said before, think of it as like a second four up invul. Assuming that you pack some near fights around him, your opponent has to beat the three plus invul relic and then a 4 plus bodyguard rule before they even get to the damage reduction and the feel no pain crap. As I've said a million times before, it's mind games, it's a ruse. You can buy yourself time here by tricking your opponent into fighting the wrong thing. I'll be honest, not all of them will fall for it, but in my experience, so many do. And that's all because Gene Steeler Cults are such a background faction that people don't see these things coming. By the end of all their underwhelming counter-offensive stuff just flops, you know, your abominant could still be standing there like a boss, as happened to me so many times in the past, and he'll even just regenerate D3 wounds in your next turn just to be annoying. So that is my totally not necessarily competitive way of doing it. It's fucking fun, but just don't actually, you know, take it to a tournament or something and expect it to do well. Again, if you want to go Twisted Helix, you won't be able to get the extra hits from Overthrow the Oppressors, but they do have the 3 CP fight against Stratagem. And that, my friends, is very important because it means you can smash something to bits and then consolidate into another target and then do it all over again. You do really need to plan ahead with your positioning for this and where you pile it and, you know, consolidate around. But it's just one way of getting extra mileage out of your big gang before the enemy gets chance to train their guns on them. And that wraps up today's video. So, you know, I hope you all have a good Christmas and all that shite. And I'll see you next time. Maybe we'll have some more leaks to work with or even better a codex. See you soon.